subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel did you buy an iphone 10s max this holiday season or a galaxy s9 plus now it's easy to forget about the s9 plus with the note 9 stealing the show but the s9 plus is actually probably a little more comparable to an iPhone XS Max just due to it being the more rounder device, it being the device that doesn't have an S Pen, just like the XS Max doesn't have no type of pen insert or anything like that. It's a little bit smaller, but we'll talk about the attributes here. We're going to find out what's the better deal. One thing I want to get out of the gate, though, is the price of the Galaxy S9 Plus is significantly less than the XS Max. So keep that in the back of your mind when we are talking about these two phones. We're talking at least four to five hundred dollars, if not more, cheaper than an iPhone XS Max. Okay, guys, so let's discuss the build quality between both of these. Now, beginning with the XS Max, if you use an iPhone X, it feels very similar to that. If you haven't, you're gonna really love these stainless steel sides that come to this device. A glass back, it's pretty strong glass, it doesn't scratch super easily either. And you do have a nice camera here. The bump is a little bit thick, so I don't really like that design, but it is covered in some really scratch resistant glass. So keys and stuff shouldn't scratch it up too easily. Now at the bottom, you can see that you do have some pinholes for your speaker and microphone, a lightning port, and it still has those classic iPhone screws next to the lightning port as you've seen on pretty much every other iPhone. It feels pretty large and grippy on the side, surprisingly, over the iPhone 10, which was much more slippery. It's a pretty heavy phone. It weighs in at 208 grams and it's 7.7 .7 millimeters thin. So it's a very thin yet large, heavier device. It has a really good feel. IP68 on board here. So this thing is a true premium feeling device in the iPhone 10s Max. However, due to the price of investment, you definitely want a case for that device. Now over here for the Galaxy S9 Plus, if you use the XS Max, you come over to this, the first thing you'll notice is how much lighter it feels. 189 grams is not a light, light phone by no means, but it's significantly lighter than that device over there. It feels a little sharper on the edges due to the curved display coming almost to the complete edge of this device. You can see that this device does have a nice aluminum sides here. So these can scratch up a little easier as I have right here. I feel like then stainless steel, you won't see it as much, but if you do scratch it, it will chip off and kind of look like that on the Galaxy S9 Plus. But aluminum sides, very strong aluminum there. Still feels very high quality. I just think the stainless steel is a little bit more higher quality, but on the rear, you have a glass design, just like the iPhone XS Max and a flat camera. So this is a better design, almost flat. It's a little bit raised. I do like the placement of this camera. I think it just looks better being centered in the middle versus off to the left up at the top. I just think it's a little bit cleaner looking than the iPhone XS Max. Now you do have the Samsung logo here, Galaxy S9 at the bottom, headphone jack and your USB-C port. This, this phone feels just about as premium in every way, shape and form as this phone. And it feels actually easier to hold in the hand at 189 grams. However, it is a little bit thicker at 8.5 millimeters. You're really not gonna notice unless you have something measuring this. These devices are about equally as premium. I think that the XS Max feels slightly more premium just because of that stainless steel material. That brings me on to the design of these devices. So when it comes to the actual looks, it's always gonna be subjective based on what you like, but the design is just more, I would say flashier for the iPhone XS Max, especially if you go with the gold or the silver models due to that shiny stainless steel we were talking about earlier and it just exudes this level of like luxury like you know gucci like rodeo drive like magnificent mile chicago like Times square new york i mean this thing right here is just it just exudes this luxury feeling when now some people say how are you gonna say apple's a luxury brand when you can find stuff in walmart from apple well i haven't seen tennis maxes all over at walmart just yet now the galaxy s9 plus also exudes that luxurious feeling for the Android side of things. If you compare the Galaxy S9 Plus to most Android phones on the market, it just feels like it's the one of the best or sitting at the top of the hill as one of the best designs here. Now about this design, what I really like about it is how compact it feels for such a large display. Now we'll talk about displays in a minute, how the XS Max is a little bit bigger, but these phones almost feel like they got the same size display, yet the Galaxy S9 feels much more manageable in the hand. So that design aspect 
is nice. And overall, the Galaxy S9 Plus's curved display is definitely a looker, even if the S8 Plus before it basically had a similar design, it's still a looker. Most phones are still not achieving this level of design as the Galaxy S9 Plus. So beautiful design here as well. Okay, so which one should you buy in terms of display? Beginning with the XS Max, it has a slightly larger 6.5 inch display. It does have a slightly higher screen to body ratio at 84.4% versus 84.2. It's a 0.2% difference versus the Galaxy S9 Plus, which is definitely not gonna be noticeable. It has 1242 by 2688 pixels and 458 pixels Per inch. It is a 3D touch display. It also has a wide color gamut for great color accuracy. It's true tone. In addition to that, it's 120 hertz touch sensing. So very smooth to respond to your inputs. Now, the thing is, is that even though it's 6.5 inches, because of the notch up here, if you were to take these 0.2 inches off, this is really more to me like a 6.3 inch display, like you would see on the Galaxy S9 Plus, the Galaxy S8 Plus, these type of devices. This device up here, because of this up here, that's about 0.2 inches up at the top. That's always really in the way. So to me, it, it really feels truly like a 6.3 or 4 inch display for the iPhone XS Max. However, it's a very accurate display. The whites are pretty white here on the device and it gets very bright for an OLED panel outdoors. The True Tone does really help out to give you a warm you know, color for when you wanna read and you want things to just adjust properly to the ambient lighting. You do have night shift on here and the notch doesn't really get in the way quite as much as iPhone 10 because it's such a large canvas it really doesn't bother me all that much at all for the iPhone 10s Max so you can see right here if we go and pinch in the notch will cut into the content up there sometimes when you're reading it will also the text will scroll through there so it can get distracting but it's not a real big deal here overall a very large beautiful display very tack sharp as well. So I think most people will love the panel that was introduced here for the 10s Max. Now coming over to the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, it's Samsung's curved technology they've been using for a very long time. The infinity display brings that aspect ratio to an 18.59 and this has significantly higher pixels per inch at 529 pixel density. Now you can definitely see if you were to look at these side by side and really like look closely at the text, the Galaxy S9 Plus has a much sharper panel. 2960p by 1440 so you can watch true like 4k videos basically on this device they're both hdr10 compliant this one has a 3d touch home button on the front it doesn't have a 3d touch display it does have always on display though which basically shows you your clock and things what i actually haven't turned the display on this one is super amoled 16 million colors so it's beautiful as well now one thing i noticed about the galaxy s9's display the s9 plus for example is that it's not as vibrant as it was on prior editions they've toned this down a little bit for the s9 plus so while it's still a little bit more punchy i think in the colors than the iphone 10s max it's closer to the iphone's accuracy than ever before so if you didn't like those overly you know saturated samsung displays before the s9 plus is not overly saturated i think you really will enjoy what they have to offer here in display settings you do have more options than the 10s max you do have true tone here but you have screen modes you can change it to amoled cinema amoled photo and i find an amoled photo basically puts it right at the same accuracy and balance as the iphone 10s max so if your eyes were reading on here and you came over to here put this in amoled photo you would barely notice any difference you would actually be just as pleased with an s9 plus display but there is one key separation from the Galaxy S9 and the XS Max, and that's this design that goes all the way down and kind of eliminates having a chin for the XS Max. I really love this aspect of design. Over here on the Galaxy S9 Plus, there's just more chin on this device. You don't really notice it when you're on a black screen, but white screens, you do notice it. Now, not having a notch does make it look like there's more bezel for the S9 Plus as well, but you have to you know, sacrifice having a notch if you wanna have almost an all-screen display. So this is almost all-screen. This is like curved close to all-screen. So let's watch a video for both and check this out really quickly. Let's go into the XS Max, hit play. And this is my XS Max review. When you do pinch to zoom, the notch will cut into content when it is you know, stretched. These are the four by three pictures. Let me get into a sample where it'll cut in. You can see, Right there, the XS Max will cut into your content a little bit, but because the display is so large, it's not really such a big deal here on this device. Whereas on the smaller one, you can definitely get a little bit more annoyed, I feel. So video looks great on here. It looks more, I would say natural. It's not so vibrant. I do think that the video looks a little better for 
the Galaxy S9 Plus a little bit more vibrant and it's just a little bit more enjoyable to watch to me. So let's hit play. And you can see, you can already see the the smaller kind of feel of the Galaxy S9 Plus, but it's like it's only a little bit. It's not like it's so much smaller that it's going to ruin your afternoon for anything like that. But this just looks great to watch. You can see very tiny bezels, no notch. It just looks fantastic here for the S9 Plus. So I'm sure you're noticing that which one I prefer when it comes to the video watching experience. It's the S9 Plus because it just has a sharper display, a more vibrant display. And um, even though it's a little bit smaller, to me, it's just more enjoyable to watch video on that one. However, they're neck and neck, but I wanted to spend a lot of time here on display because that's one of the most important aspects between buying these two. Okay, so let's talk about the software. Now, of course, we know what iOS 12 is. It's basically the iPhone experience forever, just adds a bunch of new features and it's a lot more smoother than iOS 11, but the basic iOS core system is still the same grid of icons and it just kind of works. It's very fast and especially with this touch sensing 120 hertz, it feels even smoother than ever. Updates are consistent for this device. You got the new screen time mode here that allows you to track how much you're using. This phone series shortcuts do come to iOS 12 and much, much more. There's just a lot of new features here for iOS 12. We're not going to cover all of them here. It would be a software comprehensive review. The fact of the matter is iOS 12 works really well with Mac devices, iPhone devices. It updates constantly. It's very smooth and it has great app polish. For example, when you are in social media applications, they just seem to look a little bit better to me. Anyway, I find that the pictures are a little bit compressed when you put them on Android. So overall, I think apps developers, they work a little bit more on making their iOS apps a little bit nicer. Not all of them, but a lot of them, you got exclusive titles like Fortnite that come to this device where you don't get that on Android. And most of the best apps that come to phones usually come to iOS first. Now it's software, while it might not be as desirable when it comes to updates, the Samsung experience offers a lot of features over stock Android that you will never find there. So you can see this video just playing in the background in the little pop view. You can't do this on the iPhone. You can also do a rotation landscape mode on the home screen for the S9 Plus. This came to this device for the first time. You cannot even do this for the iPhone XS Max. It stays in the portrait orientation at all times. Not only that, the Galaxy S9 Plus is super able to multitask like really good. So you can see that you can put little pop view windows. You can't even do this on Pixel device right here. So put our calendar in another pop view. We can have little windows and do a bunch of multitasking. You can also do your traditional split screen by just going like so, find the app list and go ahead and split your screen. This is amazing. Comparatively speaking to this device, you can get so much done on like one little screen here for the Galaxy S9 Plus you cannot do for the iPhone XS Max. It's one app at a time and that's pretty disappointing for the size of said device. Now, another thing you can do as I showcased in my note example, if we go into developer options here and we scroll down to the DPI settings. So let's go to our DPI settings here and let's go ahead and rock this out at 700. So it's gonna make the screen really small, but what it does is it makes the Galaxy S9 into like a little tablet. So you can see it turns it into like a little tablet here. So look at this, we got the notification center right in the middle. But what you really notice is if you need more space to do some multitasking, now check that out. We have our little windows. This is stuff you can only do on a desktop PC. So the Galaxy S9 Plus operates more like a little computer versus the iPhone XS Max, which is more like a mobile smartphone only. So if you don't like, you like having your products separated, you'll still like the XS Max. But if you want everything in one and you want a phone that can really do it all, the Galaxy S9 Plus is a lot closer to that than the iPhone XS Max. Another great feature about the Galaxy is that you can go ahead and do this one-handed mode. You can go ahead and move it to wherever you like. No one-handed mode here. So for the XS Max, what you have to do is kind of hold it with one hand, reach up to the top. You do have this reachability, which you will be using often for this device. And while it seems like I'm just talking more about the Galaxy S9 Plus, it's because there's just more to talk about with this phone. This phone is just so simple and it doesn't have so many features. Whereas this one, we could talk about the features all day. I do want to mention that they both have a payment system, Apple Pay versus Samsung Pay. Now, what I've noticed is that 
more retailers seem to be biased towards Apple Pay. So I'm seeing Apple Pay supported in more areas. But Samsung Pay doesn't really need to be supported by the retailer because of its MST technology, which allows it to basically mimic a card reader. So in terms of reliability, I would actually take out the Samsung first for Samsung Pay over Apple Pay over here on this software. One staple of the iPhone experience, though, that I should mention is Apple Music and iTunes built right in these are the go-to platform for artists you're going to see their music release first here usually it's going to sound better because it's mastered for itunes so if you're into music i think you'll like the sound quality here but if you want to store it like you put it on sd cards and you want to store a bunch of files you know on your own manual stuff then you will like the galaxy s9 plus but once you get into the ios ecosystem you get into that itunes ecosystem you start buying music there you really can't have that same experience on android so i would recommend doing streaming if you want to flip flop between operating systems so at the end of the day the galaxy s9 plus is a lot more versatile of an operating system i think it takes more time to get it just right set up put your icons where you want them than an iPhone XS Max where I think the XS Max is still better out of the box. And uh, for busy people, I think that the Galaxy S9 Plus can be a little bit of a headache remembering all these features. So if you just like simplicity, you don't wanna think much about your phone, you just wanna use it, you'll really like the XS Max. But if you, if you do think a lot about, well, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? I'm trying to do this, I can't do that you want the S9 Plus. Now discussing performance, we're not gonna go on too much about this. It's pretty clear which one is the better performer. The A12 Bionic chipset over here and four gigabytes of RAM, even though this has six gigs of RAM, is the more powerful CPU. So on your day-to-day -day stuff, if you just open up applications, you're not really gonna see too much of a difference in the day-to-day -day stuff. The Galaxy S9 Plus is a lot more snappier than the S8 Plus was, the Note 8. This phone is a lot snappier than prior Samsung phones and it hasn't shown any lag really since I've been using it in terms of, you know, speed of applications, the home screens glitching up, nothing like that. So the Galaxy S9 Plus or the iPhone XS Max, you're going to be very happy with the performance of both of them. So overall, I do have to give the win to the XS Max for performance. It is a technically superior chipset. But I have to give a win here to the S9 Plus as well in the six gigabyte of RAM department, also being one of the first Samsung phones to really have zero lag in basically anything you do or throw at it. So this is the most refined Samsung S experience ever. The S10 should outdo this one as well. But for now, you're gonna be happy with the S9 Plus's performance as well. You won't notice much of a difference unless you're really pushing them to the max pun intended all right so in terms of internet performance there's been a lot of issues that have been popping up in the news about how people are saying that they're getting bad connectivity for their tennis max i haven't experienced any bad connectivity at all for that device both of these devices do perform very well in internet browsing the lte speeds i have noticed are faster for the s9 plus so if you're looking for a little bit faster lte you definitely want this one but if you want 5g wait for the 10 the S10 that's coming, this one doesn't support 5G. So people like to keep their iPhones for a very long time. And it's kind of a little bit sad that you do have Gigabit LTE here, which is very fast, but you don't get 5G. So the XS Max is going to feel rather slow in like two years. So overall, both of them are very smooth. You're going to be happy browsing on both. Just remember that for a more secure private browsing experience, the iPhone Safari browser is definitely the way to go. Okay, so talking about audio, the Galaxy S9 Plus does give you a headphone jack as well as stereo speakers, Dolby Atmos stereo speakers, and they're very loud, very nice speaker set up here for the Galaxy S9 Plus as well as having headphone jack. And you do get headphones in the box. You also get headphones in the box with the 10s Max. This does give you stereo speakers with no headphone jack and no dongle for this device. So that's kind of lame, but it does have very loud speakers. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the mic down and we're gonna test them out to see which one sounds a little bit louder. You can judge it by ear.
Okay, so that's basically how they sound. I think that the iPhone XS Max sounds fuller and a little bit louder than the Galaxy S9 Plus, but the S9 Plus does a stellar job as well. And it's definitely not like it's a $500, $400 more increase for using a XS Max when it comes to those external speakers, and you have the benefit of the headphone jack. So that's audio on both of them. So let's talk about their battery life differences on both. Now, this one does give you a little bit of a larger battery at 3,500 milliamp hours, whereas the XS Max gives you 3,174 milliamp hours. However, I find the XS Max to last a little bit longer than the S9 Plus because it gives you more per milliamp hour. Now, the XS Max is definitely not the best battery life on the planet, but this phone is pretty good as well. They can both easily get you through a day. You do have the benefit of fast charging with the S9 Plus, something that you never get with the iPhone XS Max. No fast charger included as you will get with the adaptive fast charging like Samsung offers you. So I think in terms of battery, it's actually a better value for the Samsung device just due to having fast charging. Now they both do support wireless Qi charging, so that ain't gonna be a problem. But again, you will have to upgrade to a fast charger because this thing takes forever to charge. Now in terms of real world times, the iPhone XS Max is getting me around seven hours of screen on time, whereas the S9 Plus is getting me around six, six hours and 15 minutes around there. So both of them are very, very good and solid on battery life. I just find the XS Max to go a little bit longer than this S9 Plus. Okay, so talking about storage, the Galaxy S9 Plus does have expandable storage, but it gives you 64 gig. You can also get 128 gig or 256 gig. Now, this one goes from 64, 256, and 512. Now, jumping up on the Apple device means significant price increases over the other. So, price for storage is actually significantly higher on the iPhone XS Max versus the Galaxy S9 Plus. However, some people don't like the way that you know you manage storage on here a lot of people like their iCloud and how everything syncs together and if that's you you're really not going to care that you can get more storage for cheaper on the s9 plus because i do have to say that the s9 plus is a little bit more to manage because you're going to be putting on a physical card so you have to keep track of that and also if you switch devices it's not quite as in sync as the iPhone. So it's a little bit more management on your storage for the S9 Plus, but it does come cheaper than the iPhone XS Max. So which one should you buy in terms of security? You do have Face ID for the XS Max, which is very reliable, as you've seen right there. So this one, no Touch ID, no fingerprint scanner, just simply Face ID. However, Face ID is very secure with its infrared sensors and all these sensors up here. It's just a very more secure than Samsung's, you know, facial recognition. But Samsung's iris scanner is very secure as well. You also do have a fingerprint sensor on the rear where you don't get that. You get more ways to unlock on the Samsung device than you do for the iPhone XS Max. Just as hard as it might be to unlock a face ID, it's probably gonna be equally as hard to unlock an iris in, in real world practice, unless you're really forcing somebody to stare with their irises into that scanner. Okay, so which one should you buy in terms of the camera? Now, the iPhone XS Max does give you a dual 12 megapixel camera, one over 2.55 inch sensor on the first 52 millimeter telephoto, F2.4 on the second, and that's a one over 3.4 inch sensor, quad LED dual tone flash, and this thing does do 60 FPS at 2160p 4K stereo sound as well as smart HDR, seven megapixel front facing camera. This thing has got the chops. It's a beautiful camera, and it really does a great job at just pointing and shooting and getting the job done, combining multiple exposures, picking out the best one, combining them together with AI and the neural engine, and it just really makes a beautiful photo that doesn't require that much on the user's part to do anything one thing I don't love is that the settings are still buried in you know settings menu so you don't get it right from the camera UI but you do have so many modes here for the camera you do have a stereo sound here the Galaxy S9 Plus also records stereo sound but older iPhones did mono so you know this is a nice touch if you haven't experienced that before it's a really loud audio experience from your camera you really don't always need a microphone when you have stereo sound on your phone unless you're trying to be really professional still use a microphone switching over to the galaxy s9 plus this is a dual 12 megapixel camera variable aperture at 1.5 to 2.4 1 over 2.55 inch sensor so same sensor size the dual pixel af on here really makes its focusing times ridiculous it's like a canon camera that dual pixel af is also found on many high-end canon cameras such as the canon 80d for example now this one also does have a 52 millimeter telephoto the same as the 10s max f 
one over 3.6 so the telephoto lens is a little sharper for the 10s max and this one can do 2160p at 4k it also does a higher slow mo at 960p 720 which is basically super super slow motion but it's really hard to capture that slow motion so i don't find it that useful over here we do have a really nice camera ui it's a little bit sensitive sometimes you'll accidentally move over into the wrong feature set overall really good camera i really like how everything's laid out very simply here for the galaxy it's one of the better uis for uh, android device and it does have promo live focus everything's right there for you. you don't have to get out of the camera setting you can just live inside this camera app and just do all your photography you never have to leave it when you're using it and that's one of the best things i like about it they both take beautiful photos i've found that the camera on the s9 plus beats the 10s max at nighttime go ahead and take a look at these photo samples side by side and judge for yourself which one you like better i don't really see the massive price increase over the tennis max to beat the pants off of this much cheaper galaxy s9 plus but you judge for yourself Right, guys so here is a front facing test of the samsung galaxy s9 plus front facing camera in motion i'm gonna go ahead and test out the iphone in just a minute all right so here's some front facing video from the iphone 10s max we are in motion you're noticing that the camera is a lot closer to my face on this one so let me know your thoughts between both of them down below All right, so let me talk about the phone call quality before we wrap this video up. The S9 Plus never dropped the call. I've had the iPhone XS Max about four weeks now, and I've already dropped about two to three calls. So with that experience in mind, I'm calling the S9 Plus a better calling experience. It also has very loud speakers, just like the XS Max, and you have a headphone jack for more accessories that you probably already have laying around to plug in and just get on the call with somebody. So overall, I find this one to be the win in phone call quality. That's just my experience between both. Now that we have arrived to the final conclusion, which one should you buy? What is the better value? Now, the S9 Plus can be found for around 700 bucks on Amazon. So if we go to Galaxy S9 Plus here, you're gonna see 708 bucks here, 609 even. So, I mean, this phone can be found for significantly less than the 10s max and you've seen throughout this full comparison that the 10s max is not that much ahead of the galaxy s9 plus besides the fact that it has a slightly larger screen it's definitely a little more premium maybe looking with the stainless steel a little bit better battery life but the s9 plus has expandable storage it has a sleek design just like the iphone 10s max it has a fingerprint scanner as well as face unlock iris unlock so it has a bunch of features that the 10s max doesn't even offer and it's a lot less both of these phones are at the top level of smartphone you can buy and it just seems like the 10s max is just a little bit overpriced for what you're getting especially considering that the galaxy s9 plus is nearly an identical android version of this device and what i've been noticing is there's not a huge difference anymore between an iphone and an android phone they basically look like the same phones almost and feel like the same phones 
but they just have different softwares. That's the big differentiator these days. Whereas before, if you had an iPhone 5S, iPhone SE, iPhone 5C, any of those phones didn't feel anything like an Android phone of the time. These days, you could put your blindfold on and you wouldn't know which phone you're holding if I didn't tell you. So the winner to me in terms of a value standpoint is the Galaxy S9 Plus. There's not that much of a difference between both of these. If you're looking for better security, if you're looking for more updates and a better long-term investment for a resale value when you go to sell your device, the 10s Max wins every day on that one. But from a purely technical technology standpoint,